Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you 10 AI features in DaVinci Resolve that are really going to speed up your workflow. Now don't worry, artificial intelligence still can't replace your creativity, but it can help you with a lot of these mundane repetitive tasks. So let's jump into the first feature. Now this one's pretty cool if you've ever spent a lot of time trying to separate a part of your image because you want to apply a specific color grade uh, or maybe let's say you wanted to blur the background and leave the foreground unaffected. So depth map will essentially analyze your scene so it can figure out uh, what's the foreground, the, the main subject, let's say in the background in your shot. Uh, so you can apply the different uh, effects just to that part of the image. So here I have a shot from my upcoming shark film, which by the way, if you haven't seen my last video, I'm gonna show you how I came up with the story for this film, definitely check it out. And I will be doing more videos about how I shot this film, how I did the post-production and all that stuff. But right now I'm just gonna be using some of the shots as examples in this video. So here under the color panel, uh, I'm gonna go to effects uh, and I'm gonna look for depth map. And here it is. Now I already have two nodes up here which are for color grading. So I'm gonna create a new node where I'm gonna apply the depth map effect. So just drag and drop it under and it's gonna take a second and you see it recognized our two actresses. Uh, and then it also knows that there's the sand over there and as it gets further away, it gets darker because it's uh, basically further away. The, whatever is darker means it's uh, further away from the camera. Whatever is lighter is closer. So you can, uh, of course, adjust that. You want, if you want to, for example, target just that sand there or the actresses, or if you had a foreground, you could do that too. In this case, maybe I'll apply like a lens blur effect to kind of make the, uh, the depth of field kind of seem more exaggerated. So I want to blur the background a bit more without affecting uh, our actresses. So I can go in here and play around with some of these settings, uh, which I'm not going to go into all you know too much depth because it would take up too much time. But definitely, if you guys want to see me kind of explain in depth any of these features in this video, then let me know in the comment section below. So there, this looks pretty good, and I like this gradient because that will essentially mean that the the lens blur effect will not be applied uh, here to where the sand is. Uh, it's going to get sort of gradually applied further, uh, you know, as, as things get further away. Uh, so now I can go and to create another node. And then to that node, I'm going to apply the lens blur effect. There it is, drag it. And in order for that effect to only be applied to uh, our depth map, I got to connect the blue here to that blue. And now as you can see, this is how it's looking. now. We actually, in this case, applied it to the wrong part of the image. So I can go back to our depth map and I can invert it. And now you'll see the lens blur effect is applied there actually in the background. And you can see how quickly that is done. Uh, again, you can refine the edges and play around with all those settings. Uh, and another cool thing is that it's again, it will track throughout your whole shot. So uh, again, you don't have to rotoscope or, or track anything in there. Uh, so as you can see, as the girls are moving through the scene, it's keeping that uh, basically depth map uh, corresponding to them uh, and it's applying that effect to that part of the image that I want. Now this essentially is like letting AI do all the rotoscoping for you so you don't have to sit there and do it frame by frame. If let's say you want to cut out your subject and you want to put something in behind your subject or composite on top of something else or behind something or let's say apply a certain effect just to that part of the image. So let's jump right here. So here on the color page, uh, I'm going to select my node where I'm going to ap apply the magic mask to and I'm going to go here, magic mask. Uh, you have different options. You have the object mask and you also have the person mask. Object mask is honestly what I use most of the time. But if you want to get very specific, like let's say with the uh, person mask, you can go to the whole person or features. So for example, I could select, um, let's say I want to just adjust the hair, for example. So I can track the hair, so I'm going to select the little hair uh, tool and I'm going to do the plus one. And I'm also going to make sure to turn on the mask. So you can see right away it recognizes the hair. Uh, now, uh, of course, you can track it, so it will do it for the whole shot. So, for example, go here and as you can see, it does a really good job and actually detects which part of the scene is just uh, our actor's uh, hair. I'm actually going to delete this. I'm going to detect the whole person. So again, I'm going to choose the color picker with the plus sign. Just here, select the person. You can see it already recognizes everything. I'm going to track it forward and just show you guys kind of what else you can do with this. So you can see it does a really good job even here, like detecting the hand and knowing that here that's not part of our uh, actress. You can also go to better. Now it is going to take a lot longer depending on how powerful your computer is. 
but it will then detect all of these details. And there it is, it already did a much better job. As you can see up here, this is very blurred, but it can kind of recognize the fingers. If I go to faster, you'll notice it just kind of does a, a big blob for the hand. So better definitely is more detailed, especially here on the face. Again, this is faster. You can see it didn't detect those edges as good. And once I'm happy with it, I'm just gonna here create another node. And I'm gonna connect again the blue here to the blue of that node, telling that node that essentially I wanna apply that mask to this one. And turn off the mask preview. And now, like I said, again, you can apply any effect to it you want. You can just cut out the person, you can put text behind them. And then you can add an alpha output. So up here, and I'm gonna now connect the blue from our uh, magic mask here to that, meaning we just cut out the girl. Now back here on my edit page, I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna duplicate it. And I'm gonna put it on top of it. Now the bottom one, I'm actually gonna go now and I'm gonna adjust the color grade to that. And in that case, I'm gonna turn off that mask. So now essentially what we have is we have here on the top, we have a version that has just the girl cut out and the bottom one has the whole scene. So if I, for example, put them like this and then put, let's say, some text in behind them. Uh, so let's say go to, I don't know, basic title. And now you can see it looks as if the text was there uh, behind the girl. And I can make it, for example, bigger. And as you can see, you get a pretty cool effect. Of course, you know, if you really want this to look good, you're gonna have better looking font text, maybe animate the text, but you get the point. Now, this one's pretty self-explanatory. You got something in your shot that you don't want to have there, uh, you can use this tool to get rid of it. So here's another shot from my shark film. Uh, and you'll notice there's a lot of boats there in the background uh, that obviously I don't want them to have there because in the story, they're supposed to be stuck out in the middle of the ocean with no help around. But it just so happened that when we were filming, there was a lot of fishermen out in those waters. So now I, I'm gonna have to get rid of all those boats. So this is how you do it. So here on the color page, I'm gonna take a, one of the nodes here that I have, I'm gonna apply a window. I'm gonna actually draw over it. Basically I wanna draw over this object that I wanna remove, which is that ship there. Uh, now I'm gonna go also and go here to the tracker and I'm just gonna track it forward. And just always double check, make sure it's tracking properly. It looks like it is. I'm gonna create another node, and again, I'll connect here, the blue to the blue one. And in effects here, you look for your object removal, apply it to this new node. Let's zoom in here so I can see clearly. Now, my object up here is very small, so I'm gonna adjust this analysis boundary to be very, very, very little, like maybe, I don't know, let's try even two. Uh, I'm also gonna select object, and I'm just gonna do scene analysis. So now you can see kind of more or less where it's being applied and how it's being distorted. And it looks like it's okay. That's basically the area that is being affected. Um, and now I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. And now up here in clean plate, I'm gonna click build clean plate. And you can see right away it removed there. You can also like blend it. You can do, for example, here adaptive blending, see whether that makes it look better or not for you. Uh, you can, for example, increase that. And, uh, you know, but I can kind of just scroll through the scene. Now, if I look at it here, full screen, you can see, yeah, it looks pretty good. So uh, this is before, this is after. Now, obviously, I got to go and do that for all the other ships. Uh, but again, this is how easily you can now remove objects in your shot. If you're ever working with a shot where maybe the lighting is not the greatest on your uh, subject, or maybe the makeup wasn't done uh, or, or was done badly, or like in my case, uh, with my shark film, uh, basically we were filming out on the boat the whole day and everybody was tired, it was very hot, people were sweaty. And so this is how my actor uh, looks here in this shot. You can see he's got a lot of spots there. Well, I can use the face refinement now to get rid of some of these problems. So here on the color page, I'm just gonna create first another node. And in effects, I'm gonna look for a face refinement, apply the effect here. And we can sort of start playing around with this uh, setting. So I'm gonna zoom in here so you guys can see better. Uh, this is how our actor looks right now. Like I said, a lot of these little sort of hot spots there uh, from the sweat. So we can uh, just first go and click the analyze button. And it's basically gonna track his face. And as you can see, it does a pretty damn good job. It actually 
tracks all of this, like basically figures out where his nose, eyes, eyebrows are, lips. Now I'm gonna turn off the overlay here so we can just look at his face. So here I can go, for example, to the beauty automatic and we can just pull it. Let's see if I can move it all the way there. I can turn it on and off, gonna see what it does. As you can see without it, you can see all the little, like the, the little wrinkles there and stuff like that. That kind of smooths it out. You can also adjust the scale of it so to make the effect kind of work better depending on the on the size of your actor's face. So obviously if I bring this down, because his face is uh, kind of smaller in the shot, you notice it kind of does that, you know, applies that effect a bit better. Now I'll tell you one big tip with face refinement is less is more. You never want to apply any of these uh, basically settings all the way. So here I'm going to drag now the amount kind of to somewhere maybe, let's say do it halfway. And again, before, after. Subtle, but it does smooth it. Now, for example, I can go here, you have other things like, for example, smoothing. So I can actually smooth this, you can see there, kind of gets rid of some of those wrinkles further. But in this case, I actually don't want to do that. I'm going to reset all of that stuff. Uh, I'm actually going to go here and see shine removal. I'm going to apply that. And look what it does. See, it removes some of that shine there that was on his head. Uh, we can also, for example, go here to forehead. So you, as you can see, you have a lot of settings here. You can do eye retouching. If his eyes were open, you can actually brighten up the eyes. Now I could, for example, get rid of the, like, let's say eye bags. Now as I apply it, you'll notice that basically what it does is it brightens up the eye bag. So, so it's kind of just brightening up that area. So you could do that. Uh, but yeah, you have a lot of settings here that you can you kind of play around with. You have blush retouching, lips retouching, like for example, if you wanted to make his lips more you know, red. <laughs> I'm not sure if that looks good on him, but uh, let, let's just leave it up here, maybe. Well, let's actually see how it looks in the shot. So this is again before and after. And you can see definitely helped kind of take away some of those harsh uh, highlights there, there on his face. And uh, it just kind of makes the, the skin look a bit smoother. And as you can see, because it analyzed the face, it actually will apply it to the whole face as the face is moving and even as it's rotating because it knows now where the eyes are and the nose, you know, all that stuff. And so it actually follows the features and applies that effect so you don't have to do it frame by frame. This one is truly amazing when you're working with a shot where the audio is just horrible and you can't hear what the person's saying. Uh, we'll just clean it right up for you. So up here in the inspector, go to the audio setting and you just go to voice isolation and you turn it on. Now this is another shot from my film Shark Bait. Like I said, I'm gonna be releasing more behind the scenes and tutorials and also the final film. If you guys wanna see that, as always subscribe and follow me on my website. Uh, but yeah, in this shot, we actually did have good audio recorded with a, like a professional boom mic, but this is the audio that was actually recorded in the camera. So let's say somebody hands you footage like that and just has horrible audio like this. Ay, no importa, mira. Aquí están Pedro, Luis y Sandra. Hola. Oye, ¿y estás sola? Eh... Increíble, mira. Luis nos consiguió un bote o una lancha o algo así. Vamos a ir a la playa para real. ¿Quieres venir? And they want you to edit this and make it sound good. Uh, well, this tool might just save your ass. So here, like I said, it's very simple. And then Spectre under the audio settings, you have voice isolation. We'll just turn it on and that's pretty much it. Now you can adjust the intensity of it, but this is how it sounds when now it's applied 100%. Ay, no importa, mira. Aquí están Pedro, Luis y Sandra. <laughs> Oye, ¿y estás sola? Increíble, mira, Luis, nos consiguió un bote o una lancha algo así, vamos a ir a la playa a farrear. ¿Quieres venir? And of course, if that sounds a little bit unnatural, you know, you can take it down a little bit. So let's see if I put it down to like 62 here. Ay, no importa, mira. Aquí están Pedro, Luis y Sandra. <laughs> Oye, ¿y estás sola? Increíble, mira, Luis. So as you guys can hear, this thing really is pretty spectacular in being able to isolate the voice of the person in your shot so you can clean up any unwanted background noise. Now this is pretty cool because it will allow you to sort of adjust a little bit the lighting after the fact while you're already editing the shot. So here in DaVinci Resolve, I have this shot. This one is not from my shark film. This is actually from uh, this website I started using recently, uh, which is Raw Film. Uh, it's a stock video website. No, they're not sponsoring this video. This video, in fact, is not sponsored by anybody except those of you guys who are 
buying my uh, filmmaking tutorials or, or filmmaking lads on my website again at tomatosfilms.com if you haven't been there go check it out uh, but yeah raw film i started using it recently and they just have like really professional stock footage it's all shot on red they do actually have a few shots uh, like drone shots that are shot on uh, not on red cameras but otherwise it's all shot uh, on red all of the footage is raw it's like 4 to 8k so you can download the raw clips and you can really fine tune and sort of adjust the color grading on it and wh what i also like is that they have for example these collections so like for example if you go here uh, let's say like for example here this guy working out in a gym you'll notice that they don't just have one shot of him they have multiple shots so you can actually edit a whole sequence with it and they have lots of these sort of collections like here a girl on a bike so again if you're looking for top-notch quality beautifully shot and beautifully lit uh, stock footage then uh, check out Ruffin. And anyways getting back here to DaVinci Resolve uh, I'm gonna go and just look here in the effects tab for relight and once you find it you just drag and drop it and doesn't seem like much happened here but if you move it around you'll notice that it essentially builds sort of like a 3d representation of your scenes it already recognizes where the people are you know kind of more or less the shape of them and then you can move around this virtual light and you can you know essentially relight your scene so i'm going to turn off this thing here and i can now for example with this light i can increase the intensity of that light and you can see like i can make it look like for example there's a light here on this table right now in this shot i might actually want to hear if you turn off the effect you'll see that there is a sort of a directional light up here coming in from the screen left so let's say i just want to accentuate that so i'll go you know choose a directional light i'll pick it sort of for something like here and you know i'll just move it in so that it's not uh, creating these really really noticeable shadows you can also go in here and you can adjust you can do like shadow softness uh, you can play around with all of these things so for example in this shot if i want to just just make that directional light be a little bit stronger then uh, this is how it would look so again this is without the effect and this is with the effect added and because it's ai it will again track and follow and figure out how your subjects and objects are moving in the shot this feature is great for anyone who's uh, working with standard widescreen video but then also has to do a uh, vertical version for uh, platforms like TikTok or Instagram. Uh, so for example here I have a shot uh, that was shot regular 16 by 9 or actually a little bit even wider than that and now I'm gonna reframe it here uh, into a vertical format. So as you can see the problem is that our actor is kind of going in and out of frame right? Uh, well, normally you would have to kind of manually go in there and adjust the position and animate that. Well, not anymore. And now in the here transform settings, you have this option called smart reframe. And you can choose basically, you know, reference point or you can just do auto. Most of the time I just click auto and just click reframe. Let it analyze the clip and that's it. As you can see, you can already watch the shot and it nicely keeps the actor's face here throughout the whole shot yet it also looks natural. <laughs> you really can't make this any simpler than that. So let's say you've shot a lot of footage with a lot of different people. Maybe you've done, I don't know, a wedding video or like in my case, a film. And you want to be able to group your shots based on who's in it so that it just makes it easier later on for you to find a specific shot of that person. Well, face recognition is going to make that super easy. So here I got a folder with all kinds of shots. So I'm just going to select all of these and right click here and I'm gonna go analyze clips for people. So I just let it kind of go through and analyze all of the clips. And now it's gonna group the faces for you uh, so you can find it easier. So as you can see it right away recognize these faces. So we can go in here and for example, we can add a name. So I can put uh, our character's name in this case, because this is for the shots in my film. And now the cool thing is, as you can see, we can uh, go, for example, and based on the actor, uh, we can find all of the shots with that person. Now, once you close that, it might seem like nothing happened, but if you look at the actual metadata here, and you look at the shot and scene, you'll notice that it adds metadata for each of the people, for example, like in this case, we have the two girls that are in this shot. So we can use this now to create smart bins. So go to here, preferences for DaVinci Resolve, uh, user editing and then here you go uh, automatic smart bins for people metadata go save and now here under the smart bins you'll have a new option for people you can expand that and you can see each of the actors names in this case 
And when I click on it, it shows me just the clips with those people. Uh, so now, for example, when I'm editing and let's say I want to find a, you know, a certain shot with Jennifer, I can just click on this folder and here all of the shots with her will pop up. Whenever you're editing a long shot of somebody talking, you know how hard it is sometimes to find that specific sentence or word that the person says. Well, editing with text uh, makes that actually very easy. So here I have a clip of me talking, doing a desktop review. Uh, so I can right click on it and go audio transcription, just go, go transcribe. Now I'm just going to let it go through and sort of analyze the whole clip. Now this clip up here is actually very long. It's almost one hour long. So it's going to take around four minutes to analyze the whole clip just because I had a lot of like me repeating the same line, you know, making mistakes. But anyways, let me just jump to the end when it's done analyzing it. So now that it's done, as you can see, I can scroll and I can see all of this text because again, I did a lot of talking, uh, but I'm going to go right up here to the top. And uh, I know I did the intro many different times. I had a lot of different mistakes and it looks like here's like the last time that I said it. So that's probably the, the good take. So I can just highlight this text and uh, I can create, for example, a sub clip. I can play it. But in this case, I just want to uh, drop it into my timeline. So there. And then, for example, I have another line, right, that I said. So I can go here and I'm going to drop this clip here, too. Now, here, there's another part where I'm talking about the sponsors. And uh, I'm just going to select that again. And again, I'm going to drop it. And as you can see, you can very easily now kind of go through and you can select just the parts that you want. And you can very fast to sort of start building your timeline. Um, so that you can, you know, again, edit this very fast. As you can see, a really cool feature that's gonna definitely speed up the workflow if you're editing a lot of these talking head videos. Whenever you get footage from a client and you gotta start editing it, you know that before you can even do that, first you gotta do the painful task of sort of organizing uh, all of your clips so you know what's where and, and what it's for. Uh, well, again, DaVinci Resolve's AI tool here is gonna really speed that process up. So in this folder here, I've got a whole bunch of different video and audio files and uh, I can just select all of them, right click up here and go audio classification, go analyze. And now I'm just going to wait for it to do its thing. Once it's done, you're going to go here to smart pins and you'll be able to see under collections uh, all of your sort of clips uh, categorized. So you have audio video clips, you have dialogue. So for example, we'll show you which clips uh, have some dialogue in it. Uh, and they don't have to be necessarily just video clips. They can be also audio clips. Uh, you the same thing for music. You go here, you have all your music tracks, uh, your sound effect tracks, uh, and clips with just silence, which in this case, I don't have any. Uh, not only that, but you can go to subcategories and you can even go here. You have, for example, uh, effects. Uh, you have bold sounds. <laughs> so you can go here to nature sounds. Uh, they even found wind sounds clapping, <laughs> clicking sounds, wood. Uh, I found even animal, like for example, tiger and some other recording, not even sure what that is. Uh, car sound effects. This will definitely speed up the whole mundane task of having to organize your media before you can actually start the creative process of video editing. Of course, DaVinci Resolve has a lot more than just these 10 AI features. There's, for example, other things like uh, automatic subtitles, uh, super scale, uh, hyperspeed or, or uh, automatic scene detection. Uh, so if you guys want me to do other videos about some of these features uh, and a whole bunch of other really cool stuff that DaVinci Resolve offers, uh, then just let me know in the comment section below. Definitely check out my website at tomantasfilms.com. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my newsletter so you're notified of my future videos. And if you really like this video and you found it helpful, it would help me a lot if you could hit that thumbs up button and uh, leave a comment below. Uh, thank you guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.